John, I was a little overwhelmed when I saw that it was 38 pages, but given how heavily redacted this document is, it didn't take long to see what some of the bullet points of this were. And most of this is outlining again, uh, as your previous guest mentioned, the probable cause that they had for executing the search warrant on the former president's home, but also detailing the legal battle that's been going on uh, for more than a year between Trump and the National Archives in a bid to retrieve those documents. They did uh, reveal that FBI agents had reviewed 15 of those boxes provided by the National Archives from May 16th to 18th. Uh, what they found were 184 unique documents bearing classification markings, including 76 documents marked as confidential, 92 marked as secret, 25 marked as top secret. Uh, but as, as again, as you parse through this, um, it, it talked a little bit about where they believed the documents had been stored. We don't have this graphic yet, but I'm going to read you a little bit. It says, and this is, of course, the agent from the Washington field office whose name has been redacted in this document for his own protection that was stipulated by the Justice Department. Again, it says, based on this investigation, I believe that the storage room at former POTUS's residential suite, Pine Hall, the 45 office and other spaces within the premises are not currently authorized location for the storage of classified information or NDI. Similarly, based upon this investigation, I don't believe that any spaces within these premises have been authorized for the storage, at least since the end of uh, the former president's administration on January 20th, 2021. We did know that during his presidential term, Trump had uh, one of those a secretive compartmentalized information rooms or otherwise known as a skiff uh, where he did review sensitive documents. Those are again rooms that um, certainly officials uh, are, are protected electronically and can be able to review sensitive and highly classified information. Uh, but clearly they're noting here that that was not the case after that. Uh, we know that in the order to unseal, Judge Reinhardt had wrote that he found that the government had met its burden of showing a compelling reason or good cause to seal portions of this affidavit because disclosure would reveal the identities and witnesses of law enforcement agents and uncharged parties. Those are clearly blacked out on this. The investigation strategy, direction, scope, sources and methods and grand jury information protected by federal rule of criminal procedure. How much have we learned from this, John? We're still parsing through it. We don't know. But again, large portions of this redacted. The former president had wanted this to be released, but it was really this coalition of media groups that brought this legal case. And we already know uh, what it believes to be outlining some of the potential criminal charges in this, which is the retention of national defense information, removal or concealment of government records and obstruction of a federal investigation. I'm not quite sure uh, with the reaction on Capitol Hill, John, what this is going to do for the calls for transparency and accountability with the Justice Department, particularly when you look at the fact that the Attorney General Merrick Garland uh, personally approved the raid on the former president's home. There's just been so much, especially coming out of uh, Republican Senator Chuck Grassley's office, the ranking member on the Senate Judiciary Committee, talking about reports from whistleblowers about an infection of political bias that exists within the FBI and again within the Washington field office. This agent in here was from the Washington field office when it comes to the cases that they've been opening and closing. Well, committee, I'm sorry, I'm just pe peeking in trying to read that statement from the Save America, Pat, because when you, you know, as I'm reading through this again on a first read, it starts out like a property dispute between these about these documents between uh, the the National Archives and Record Administration uh, and President Trump. And uh, you know they went to Mar-a-Lago in February looking for some of these documents. President Trump, in which is cited here, states that they didn't find anything, and apparently they wanted they wanted more, so they went back with a, with a search warrant. Uh, to try and find them and, it, uh, and it's giving you and it's giving you the prologue there it's outlining yeah. exactly what's happened i mean that all of that is not new information when you start getting to the meat of the document where you really want to see the facts that they've laid out in that case that's what we're seeing is blacked out yeah all this lots of pages that look just like this kill me and we're trying to make sense of it all live on the air here great to see you uh keep reading good luck and we'll check back in with Thanks, you uh, when we get more information
All right, uh, let's go over to Jenna Ellis now. She's standing by, former counsel to President Trump, Newsmax contributor. Jenna, great to have you with us. Great to see you, John. Uh, in Kilmini's report there, she mentioned uh, some of the stuff that's in this affidavit. And of course, as Professor Dershowitz indicated, when you read it, there are certainly things in there uh, that the uh, DOJ wants out there, um, you know, stuff like this. They talk about these documents, um, 184 unique documents bearing classification markings, 67 documents marked as confidential, 92 marked as secret, 25 marked as top secret. I almost sound like James Comey when he was calling out Hillary Clinton for what she possessed here. What do you think makes this different? Yeah, so I'm just uh, also still reading through this affidavit and uh, the portions that we do see. And what's interesting is that uh, most of the section of probable cause has been redacted. Um, but what I find most interesting is that we know now that this started as a dispute from the uh, National Archives and that they were the ones that transmitted that request to the Department of Justice. But the key fact here is that while this affidavit purports to say that, and remember, probable cause for a search warrant is that there's evidence of a crime at the place to be searched or in the things to be seized. So this is um, inherently a criminal investigation that they're purporting. And the material fact here that we don't know that is in dispute is whether or not these documents were actually labeled as classified or top secret or SCI, were they in fact classified at the time that the president possessed them? And was that actually evidence of a violation of any of, any of these underlying uh, statutes that this affidavit refers to? Because President Trump has consistently said, no, all of these things were declassified at the time that he moved all of this to Mar-a-Lago. And so to me, you know, this th that's really the key fact here that we don't have uh, a, an adjudication on whether or not these were actually classified. And so, um, you know, as the National Archives is continuing to suggest that this violates the Presidential Records Act, you know, or any of these other things, uh, whether or not they're classified, I think is a key uh, issue here, as well as whether or not the National Archives uh, knew or is just suggesting that they may think that it was classified, but I'm not really sure that this raises the level of probable cause, especially because we don't know uh, so much of the redacted material here. Yeah, still a lot of questions uh, remain, Jenna. And uh, you know, Professor Dershowitz earlier indicated that he believes the bar has been met for probable cause. I know you disagree with that. Explain a little bit more about what you what you mean. Well, yeah. So I mean, here you know there has to be evidence of a crime in the place. Uh, to be searched. And while probable cause is a very low uh, threshold, ultimately, on the standard of proof, you have, you know, of course, reasonable suspicion, which the Supreme Court has articulated is more than a mere hunch. Uh, but probable cause is even one step further than reasonable suspicion. And so it can't just be on, you know, the National Archives belief. It can't be on a hunch. It can't be just on their understanding of potentially a suggestion that maybe these documents are classified. And so it has to be more than that. And so what I would like to know is how certain and how confident are they that these were actually classified documents that may ultimately uh, suggest that there was some kind of underlying criminal activity here. Because remember, we're dealing with a lot of civil statutes as well. I mean, the Presidential Records Act and preserving the presidential legacy, that's not something that actually goes to national security. So, you know, as uh, more information comes out, and again, you know, I'm just, I've just done a cursory reading of this affidavit, but it also um, suggests to me that the National Archives here will have to justify how they know for sure that these particular pages, which they say are intermingled among all kinds of other documents, right. are actually classified at the time that they uh, transmitted this report to the Department of Justice, because President Trump has consistently maintained that he declassified all of these documents. Yeah, and that's uh, his prerogative on how he wants to do that as long as he was the president at the time. Jenna, great to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, John.